All right, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going over yet another example in drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams. I must have at least 10 of these in here by now. So hopefully you got a lot of practice in, all right? So here is our second example with, um, uh, with this time drawing shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams with a uh, fixed support and with a hinge in the middle. All right. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right. Similar to the last problem we did, the first thing we want to do is just split up the system and solve for reactions like we do in every single problem. All right. So uh, if we split up the system, right, first identify the reactions, right? What kind of reactions are we looking for? All right. We're looking for since this is a fixed support, a y, a x, and some of moments, a moment around a, right? Because it's being resisted. All right. So we have this uh, six kilonewtons here, and then we finally have the other side. We have the other side like this, and then this is c, right? So we have four kilonewtons per meter, right? Whoa. Hello. Okay. So when we split up this hinge, right, just keep in mind, uh, one ways, one sides. Oh God. This is what happens when you multitask. All right. So, uh, we have a reaction CY at the end, right? Cause it's a roller. Okay. And when we split up this uh, hinge, we have to make sure that uh, there are equal and opposite forces acting at that side. All right, so we can assign this side as by equals upwards, by equals downwards on the other side. You can do it the other way around. It doesn't matter. It works out as long as you keep your signs the same. Okay, so solving this, right? We can do. We we can look at this side first, right? Um, and just say, okay, it's symmetrical, right? Because this is two meters. Um, there are CY and BY acting upwards, four kilonewtons per meter downwards, right? Uh, four times two is eight total kilonewtons acting straight in the middle. And we can just say that both resist four kilonewtons. Okay, simple enough, right, going on. So this is equal to four kilonewtons. And finally, if we do sum of moments, I mean, sum of forces, in the first half, so this half, right? Uh, we have six going down whoop, and four going down, right? So that's a total of 10. Why is this so thick? 10 kilonewtons going upwards. Okay, so once we have that, we can just do a quick sum of moments, right? So sum of moments around A uh, equals zero, right? We have uh, six times, ooh, I forgot to write the distances. What is this? Two meters and two meters, all right? So two, six times two, right? And that's going clockwise, so it's negative, minus by, which is four, right? Times four, right? So, and then finally, plus ma equals zero, right? We have a total of 12 plus 16. Um, 12 plus 16, that's 28, right? Sum of moments, 28 kilonewtons uh, times meters. So once we have all this information down, we can write that down here for us to see, right? Mm -hmm. That's moment force here and then force here. Okay, now we simply just draw, right? Shear force diagram, go up 10, nothing in between here and here, down six, that's four, right? Nothing in between here, right? And then four, and then minus eight in total because four times two is eight, and then we have negative four here, right? And then going back up, final reaction at C, we go back to zero. All right, simple enough. Um, yeah, okay, and then find the areas. So what's this area? This is uh, 10 times two, 20, right? Th 
this distance here, four times two is eight. Um, and then this is four times two um, divided by two because it's a triangle. So that's four and negative four. Okay, these are the areas. So once we have that, we can go ahead and take a look, right? Don't forget, please don't forget, there is a negative, I mean, a 28 kilonewtons acting at the end because it's a fixed support, all right? So imagine we cut the beam virtually with a non-existence distance, right? We have 28 this way, right? And we need how much? We need 28 kilonewtons per meter going this way. Otherwise, it's spinning towards space, right? You spin something counterclockwise, you got to have something spinning it clockwise, all right? Now, since, since I know some of you might be confused, right? But if you remember the positive sign convention, right? We have moments, if you're cutting from the right side, right? Counterclockwise equals positive. This one is a counterclockwise force, 28. So therefore, it's negative, all right? Negative, 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 negative 28, okay? And then now we just have to do the simple part, adding up the areas, right? Uh, let's go here. Okay, negative 28 plus 20, positive area, right? Negative 8 plus another 8, 0, right? And then finally, plus 4, right? Since it's a triangle, we have a bit of a curve, and then minus 4, a 0, right? And uh, again, with the triangles, uh, more area equals more increase, right? more area on this side equals more decrease on this side and less area in between equals gentler slope in between okay so yeah that's your shear force bending moment diagrams for this problem right over here okay i'll give you a few seconds to copy it down while i'll give you a very nice summary at the end <laughs> all right so when you're going with this problem again right don't get confused it might look a bit complicated but it's really not right just do the same thing we've been building upon right when you see a hinge right split the system up right and when you split the system up make sure to add your opposing forces at the hinge okay once you have that in solve for your reactions right uh, whatever you have, and then piece it back together, all right? When you piece it back together, these forces in between kind of cancel out, so they won't matter in the shear force diagram, okay? Now, finally, if we, um, if we draw shear force diagram, area underneath is going into bending moment diagram. And please do not forget, because I know some of you will, this, uh, this applied moment at the very end, all right? If you're unsure of any point, right, just draw the beam and remember the positive sign convention, all right? And that will tell you how much shear and how much moment is at that point you cut, okay? If you're ever unsure. If, if you're getting good at these and you can just do them ultra instinct like I am, <laughs> you, can, um, you can just draw them perfectly fine. But... The graphical method is definitely faster, but always make sure you understand the concept first. Okay, so that's it. That's it for this problem. All right. Hopefully that clarified some things with drawing shear force diagrams with a uh, hinged in the middle. Okay, uh, that's it. All right. I'll uh, see you next video. Goodbye.